<clears throat> All right, um, my name is Stephen Allen, and I'm the lead singer of the Gunman. Hi, I'm Joe Roberts. I am the rhythm guitarist in Booyah Moon. My name's Taylor, or Tato, and I'm the drummer for Booyah Moon. I'm Jordan River. I am the lead guitarist of uh, Booyah Moon. Hi, I'm Brooke Bullock, and I am the bassist and backup vocalist for Booyah Moon. Um, it's it's kind of interesting, um, like people ask how we joined the band, because it wasn't really so much like a joining process, as much as just like a like simultaneous formation more so I mean we started out more or less with me Joe and Jordan and then Brooke kind of added on and then Taylor was like unofficially remember the band we didn't have drums um, but it was basically it was pretty organically just like the five of us kind of came together that way four of the five of us were English majors and then Taylor was a theater design major so we've all been really interested in stories like our whole lives. And so we really appreciate music as an opportunity to tell stories in a different way. So we try to kind of like, a lot of the songs that I write especially are, are pretty narratively based. And we try to sort of um, bring a little bit of theatricality to our shows. And um, we have a lot of fun doing that. I want to talk about the band name, but Booyah Moon, it comes out of a Stephen King novel called Lisey's Story and Save the Summary. But in the book, it's this place that this person goes to, this writer. This magical place and for us I think the name fits because Booyah Moon is like our creative space like we go to it and uh, we're all contributors and we come out with this thing that we're all really proud of and stuff and uh, yeah yeah we are a force to be reckoned with <laughs> She has really strong connections with uh, Grassroots Shakespeare, a local theater company, and our first handful of gigs, I'm pretty sure, were actually opening for them. So Brooke actually got us our first handful of shows, and then ever since then, Taylor's kind of been the one um, getting us all of our gigs. So it's been real easy for me. <laughs> So setting up local shows is kind of an interesting process. It does seem like there's a good scene, um, and I kind of just had to become more a part of it in order to understand how to get shows and things like that. Um, a lot of it's just been searching what are the venues online, seeing if they have a contact page, um, and then like Facebook groups and stuff like that as well. It's one of those things where people always say it's who you know, and it really is that way because like pretty much everything that we've done has been through connections that we've found or that we've like had to forge. this becoming a full-time thing but I also like to put as little pressure on the art and the things that I'm a part of just because like I don't know I find that the things that I really enjoy about the artistic process become like strained for me if I try to like squeeze money out of it or like I don't know so I I'm I'm happy where it is but also I if, if it takes off and people love our music and we become like global then sure like i i won't i won't i wouldn't be against that at all right now it's, it's a side gig it, it'd be cool i guess to make it but also i don't think i'd want to rely on it as a 
source of income because I fucking hate my job and I don't want this to become my job because then I'd probably fucking hate it. If it was something that was full time and I was focusing on it, I'd probably wig myself out constantly um, about how, I don't know, I would just feel the pressure. So if it's on the side, it's, you know, it's kind of like the sandbox. You know, you're not building a house for your family, you're building a sandbox that's fun and cool that everyone can come check out. Oh, it's, not, it's not something that we don't work on. Um, I mean, we spend a lot of time on it. We practice just about every Sunday. Sometimes we have to take them off. We do shows and we're working on new songs and stuff all the time. But it's mostly just kind of uh, for fun. Clap and sing and dance and fling your bodies around. Move around. Yeah. as a like musical scene because it isn't Los Angeles and it isn't um, you know like any other really big city but it's still one of those cities people know about and also there's a surprising amount of bands I think that you know come out of Salt Lake or Orem or Provo area that kind of like people all over the US at least know them um, so I think it's actually kind of ideal in some ways for um, smaller bands to get started here um, but there there are less opportunities than if it was you know one of the big big cities you just scenes I mean I've, I've been to local shows in California and things and one thing I would say Utah it seems like the scene including the listeners takes itself very seriously like uh, almost like it's a self-aware thing that Utah is a place where uh, the creative mojo is sort of and I think when there's a place that has a strong culture like the Mormon Church there's sort of this artistic counterculture or at least need for expression. So I think Utah is probably good because of that. Lots of people are very supportive of each other and willing to let other bands open for them and they're always looking for other bands to play shows with and stuff. And there's a couple of cool venues that are always looking for people to play. So I don't know, it's, it's cool. There are so many people in our local scene um, that by nature it's kind of competitive, even just like online. Like you can get so much music just for free that it's hard to get somebody to be like, hey, you know, give this a try. Because they're like, well, I have 900 million other things online for free that I'm listening to. So um, I think just the, the nature of the industry as a whole, not even just locally, um, it's getting kind of competitive because it's getting easier and easier to produce high quality music and there's a lot of really talented people out there so the uh, the local music scene in Salt Lake has always been really cool to me. I've, I've been listening to local bands and going to local shows since I was in like middle school and I always wanted to be a part of it. It always seemed like um, the bands were like a lot more connected and I think you kind of have to be to be like in a local scene because you have to know people like I was saying to like get gigs with. <clears throat> so. Um, I've always felt like it's a really active music city though, like there's venues all over the place and people have really small like private venues and, and people love them like Kilby Court is a really well known venue but it's like a just a one room, it's really small um, but people love to go there and it was like a, a goal of ours to play there and we did and um, it was there, there's a lot of support for local music here that you get on the radio and you can get like we've been interviewed by radio, we've been interviewed by magazines, stuff like that. So like there's um, <clears throat> like an infrastructure in place to get local bands some uh, like notoriety, which is nice. Just about every kid in Utah gets music lessons. And so like everybody plays piano or like violin or guitar or something. <clears throat> and there is this kind of like local scene that's going on and people are involved in music. And so, uh, you know, I think there's a part of everybody that wants to be a rock star. And so if you have the means and you've been like 
train of an instrument and stuff like that. But I think there are a lot of people who go for it here. And with everything in place with all the venues and all the kind of stuff that you have available to you in Utah, I think there is a lot of competition there. But I feel like it's friendly competition. Like we've never had any sort of a um, like rivalry, like Jets and Sharks kind of situation. <laughs> is all kind of do-it-yourself um, right now the way that the industry is and I think that's kind of fun and we have a lot of opportunities and a lot of creative control uh, and so one thing that we did is we made our own music video which was really fun and I'm pretty proud of how it turned out and I think it's um, a good first step to introduce people to us because they can like physically see us and it's not just like a crappy phone recording of a show performance. We have like a video that people can watch with a high quality recording to introduce us to the world. being in a musical group with, with people is like we meet every week and that's that's really wonderful like it keeps you creatively active um, I think that's really important like some people think there's creative people and imaginative people and there's not but like there was someone who said it once in a way that I really liked there's people practicing it and there's people who aren't um, and so I love getting together with these people who are extraordinary and tons of fun and um, getting to, you know, stay active on what we love to do.